You're watching Fugitive Red Eye, and welcome to another episode of Overanalyzing. It's been a fat minute since I've done one of these. I actually recorded one not that long ago, but I didn't feel it was good enough to upload, so I just kind of scrapped it. I might include it as like a bonus at the end of a different video on the same subject, but that's not this video. This video I'm going to be talking about Gona Guy and my own kind of theory about a shared universe. Now, it is no secret that Gona Guy likes to reuse a lot of his characters with lots of cameos and callbacks to his previous works and he'll put his similar characters in various different situations in different stories. For instance, the best example I can give is Naujiro Abashiri, also known as Naujiro Hayami, or Naoko Sukeban. All three are essentially the same person, uh, is in almost every Gonagai work, and Naujiro is one of my favorites. He's the delinquent gang thug leader, who was first in the Abashiri family, later appeared in Cutie Honey manga as Naoko, a female counterpart of himself, uh, and then the Cutie Honey anime as Naujiro Hayami, who's more close to his original male counterpart. Uh, in Abashiri Family, he was a cyborg, so that's probably the coolest version. Uh, then he was in the Demon Prince Enma OVAs, he was in the Shootin' Doji OVAs. He was in a lot. Uh, if I list every single one, we'll be here all day. And he's also done the same thing with Alphon, both the male and female versions of the character. Akira Fudo from Devilman has made cameos in several other works of Gonagai, uh, including but not limited to uh, New Cutie Honey, se several crossover works, um, Violence Jack, obviously, just to name a few. But. But what if it were all one big universe? What if they were all linked somehow? Sure, there's some things that might contradict that, but I have a fairly good explanation for that, even though it's kind of a cop-out. So let us assume that all of Gonagai works occup occupy the same universe. Because, frankly, I've always kind of said that to people, even though it's not necessarily 100% confirmed, but it is something that's fun to think about. So, here's how I think some of these things fit together, and this is just me... Coming up with my own fun theory. Obviously, this is not anything officially confirmed by Gona Guy, and there are some contradictions that I'm going to have to explain away, but here we go. So, all of them are in the same universe, right? I'm going to say that the end of the timeline overall is Violence Jack. That is the fi final part of the entire Gona Guy universe timeline. Finding out exactly where all the others fit in is a bit more complicated, just given that there are so many different adaptations, spin-offs, sequels, and prequels that have been made. But I feel confident in saying if it's all one universe, Violence Jack is the final entry in that universe. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's talk about some different cameos and characters that carry over from one series to the next. So we'll start with Devilman and Mazinger Z, specifically the animes. So Devilman has obviously had a crossover with Mazinger Z in the anime adaptation. In that anime adaptation, Mazinger Z vs. Devilman, the two of them team up to fight against the forces of Dr. Hell. This is obviously considered non-canon, since many demons who Devilman had already killed appear in it, but what if they were brought back to life somehow? What if this was, in fact, canon to the anime version? And again, we'll get to my explanation for the multiple versions in a moment. In addition to that crossover, both Tare and his little girlfriend Mio have appeared in the Mazinger Z anime, specifically their anime counterparts, especially since Mio didn't exist in the manga. So that tells me that at least those two anime share a universe. Akira and Miki, specifically their anime counterparts, have appeared in re -Cutie Honey as a brief cameo in episode 2. As well as I've heard Akira can be seen in the background in one of the original Cutie Honey episodes, but I couldn't see him, so if he's there, it's very hard to spot. But they definitely do appear in Re-Cutie Honey, as well as New Cutie Honey, as I previously mentioned. In New Cutie Honey, it's in his human form, clearly pre-transformation, uh, because he doesn't ever transform to fight. So un unless he's just holding back and not turning into a demon to spare the humans, he's clearly pre-transformation at this state. Now, New Cutie Honey takes place a hundred years in the future, which may confuse you with why he would be pre-transformation, but again, I will get to the explanation of all these inconsistencies in a moment. And tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and say in this timeline, the Abashiri family is the first part of the timeline. Just because it's where several of the characters got their origin, their original appearance. Omori-kun can be seen in several different stories as well. Omori-kun obviously originally appeared in the story of the same name, uh, but he appeared in Shin Mazinger, at least the anime adaptation. He appeared in Ammon, the Dark Side of Devil Man, the manga version. And he briefly appeared in... Dororon and Makun Mera Mera, which is the 2011 remake. There are also references to Violent Jack in Dororon and Makun Mera Mera, as well as in Shin Mazinger. In the Mazinger Z manga, there is a weird version of Alphon and Pochi with their heads swapped. Alphon and Pochi, of course, first appeared in uh, Kikai Kun, which I've never actually read, but Kikai Kun also had a crossover where he fought Omori Kun. 
And I have read that, Kikai vs. Omori. Speaking of Alphon and Pochi, uh, they also appeared in Omori-kun itself, in addition to Kikai-kun, as well as the Devilman 1972 anime, the Cutie Honey manga anime, and in, and, and in Cutie Honey universe. Plus, there's a couple of different Alphons in New Cutie Honey, both a male one and a female one. So here's the way I explain the Alphons. There are two factors to it. One of the factors we will get to later when I explain everything else. But one of them, we're going to assume that the Alphon family is in fact a family. There may be a contradiction in the fact that Alphon often says his name is Alphon Louis Steinbeck III, with Alphon being the first name, and it sounding like a Western name, so it wouldn't be the last name. But let's assume that Alphon has a really weird name, and he is in fact still Japanese, and that Alphon is still the family name. I know that doesn't really make a whole ton of sense, but we're going to say that just for sake of argument. So we're going to say the male Alphon is the brother, and the female Alphon is the sister, because there are slight variations in their personalities, both of which are very fun and both interesting characters, but we're going to pretend they're different just for sake of fun. Like I said, that's one explanation we'll give with Alphon. We'll give the other in a moment, because again, there are various interpretations and versions of the characters. But the way I like to think about it is Alphon was a school teacher in Devilman, in, 19, in the 1972 Devilman, lost his job and went homeless, as did Pochi, uh, to join the beggars in Omori-kun. Uh, and then later on, his family line reappeared in New Cutie Honey. Because somehow he was able to breed. <laughs> Again, this is just me pulling all this out of my ass, so don't take it all as, uh, you know, anything official. But, uh, it is still a fun way to look at it. If you actually read what he says in Omori-kun, Alphon is actually from some sort of prestigious family, the Steinbeck family. But again, we're gonna just kind of be like, we're gonna be like MatPat and ignore the things that contradict our theory. How's that? Yeah, it's, it's just a fun way to look at it. But let's move on to the other factor. The one that kind of applies to everything that actually is one that would make logical sense in the context of Gonagai. If you've read the Devilman sequels, then you know that there is a lot of reincarnation and time loop stuff. The world is being reincarnated multiple times within the Devilman franchise, and in a way, because of that, you could assume every version is canon, even if they're not part of the main timeline. Granted, there are only four Devilman stories that are technically supposed to be canon currently. That's Devilman, Devilman Lady, Devilman Saga, and Devilman Demon Knight. There, it's possible that Shin Devilman is canon. There's some debate on that wasn't originally, but then it got put into the revised edition, so it's debatable. But the point is, there's maybe five, if you want to be generous and include Shin Devilman, that Gonagai has confirmed to be canon. Uh, and you see more of the time loop in Ammon, the Apocalypse of Devilman, where it starts cycling through various parts of the timeline, uh, and having different stuff happen to disrupt that timeline. So with all this reincarnation, why couldn't the different series be other incarnations of the world, or some, in some cases, be happening at the same time? Who's to say that the, the 370s anime Toei adaptations, you know, Devilman, Cutie Honey, and Mazinger Z, who's to say that they didn't all happen around the same time? Now let's get on to why I think Violence Jack is the end of the timeline. Well, it's just kind of a fitting finale. Because Violence Jack brings together pretty much every major Gonagai series into one big reincarnation. It's a reincar it's a post-apocalyptic reincarnation of the world where various characters from various Gonagai works come in. I'll touch on that a little bit more when I actually review the manga, which will be a minute because I've still got a little bit of reading to do, but I have read most of it, and I've read the ending, and I've read the beginning, and I've read a good chunk of the middle. There's still a couple of volumes I need to read before I can be confident enough to do an entire full review, but I've read most of it. And obviously I've seen the OVAs. And I've read as much of Shin Violence Jack as I could find. I can never find the real version of Violence Jack, Devils in a War-Torn Land. Um, every manga app that tends to have it actually just has Shin Violence Jack, and they put the wrong title on it. Because uh, Demons in a War-Torn Land is actually one where he gets transported back to the feudal Japan period and is like samurai stuff. I'd really love to see that, but I can never find that one. But yeah, Violence Jack has reincarnations of pretty much every major Gonagai thing. Obviously, spoilers ahead, um, but, uh, you know, Jack himself being the reincarnation of Akira Fudo, uh, Ryo being one of the dog people of the Slum King, the Slum King himself being Xenon, Miki being one of the dog people of the Slum King, Honey being in it as well as uh, Ryo's sister in this new incarnation. Several of the characters from Dororon and Makun do appear as well. Uh, Jim Mazinger is the reincarnation of the mech Mazinger Z, and Koji rides around on his head. Most of the characters from Susano, most of the primary ones, especially King Dread, do appear in Violence Jack as well. So that's why I like to look at Violence Jack as the final part of the timeline. Not to mention it actually is the only timeline where Devilman defeats Satan. So because of that, 
I really like to look at that as the finale of the series. Now, obviously, again, none of this is canon. This is all my own interpretation of it, which is very flaky at best in how strong it is, but I think it's still a fun way to interpret the universe. Not to mention, Najiro appears as the leader of a gang of bandits, but under the name of Kraken, during Violence Jack as well. Uh, and several Devilman demons reappear as these kind of thugs that have similar appearances to their demon forms. Uh, Dante is in it as a biker gang leader. So why not assume that it's all just different elements of a time loop? Why not just assume that every single element of the series is canon in its own weird way through a different incarnation? Obviously, this is not the official explanation, but hey, it's fun. Uh, other things that are worth noting is there is also the Chibi Charagona Guy World um, OVA, which is the uh, Chibi interpretation which combines Devilman, Mazinger Z, and Violent Jack into one OVA trilogy. There was also the Super Famicom game called Chibi Chara Wars, which has a similar premise. And of course, there's Legend of Dynamic Goshuden Hokaino Rondo, which is the Game Boy Advance game, which combines several different Gonagai series, if not all of them, all into one role-playing game. So yeah, that's my way I like to interpret it. There are some things that I obviously missed. Kekko Common has reoccurred in a couple of different things, specifically under the name Kekko Honey. She appears in Dororon and Makun Maramera as well. Um, there is the Violent Jackknife in Shin Mazinger, which is obviously a reference to Violence Jack. Um, but uh, obviously most of these things are, in, in reality, probably just callbacks and cameos, because Gona Guy likes to reference his older stuff, and that's part of his style. But I like to look at it as more than that, because it's fun. And sometimes there does seem to be genuine thought put into that. Other times, not so much. But I do think, to some degree, they are kind of supposed to share a universe, but also kind of not. I just like to go full force and just say, hey, it's all one shared universe, because that's way more fun than just trying to explain, well, some things kind of overlap, but not so much. Those are my thoughts on whether or not Gona Guys works inhabit a shared universe. Obviously, this is my own interpretation and is not official in any way, shape, or form, but it's, it's a fun thought. Anyway, this has been Fugitive Red Eye. Have a good one.